Respected scholars, my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We congratulate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and we congratulate As-Siddiqatul Tahira Fatima al-Zahra and all the Imams on this auspicious occasion of the birth of our Savior Al-Imam al-Mahdi ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu al-Sharif wa sahil al-Makharaja and we congratulate the Maraja' al-Idham and as well as the Ummah al-Islamiyya jami'an every single Ummah, not just Islam but I also send my congratulations to the whole entire world for the coming of the Savior is not just happiness in the hearts of the Muslimin, but the coming of the Savior will lead to happiness in the hearts alaykum salam will lead to the happiness in the hearts of every single creation on this earth. Imam al Mahdi Ajrullah Ta'ala Faraja, when it comes to the Aada of Ahl al Bayt alayhum salam and the Mukhalifin they come and they ask us this one question. Now maybe the majority of people here will know the answer to this question, but repetition is key. So we repeat so the youth can understand, so when they get asked this question, they'll be able to answer. And this question is always, Kayfa? How did the Imam al-Mahdi, or why has he been alive to, the, to this now? So for 1400 years, you guys claim that Imam al-Muntadr ta'ala farajahu al-Sharif is living till now. This question that is asked by the enemies of Islam, by the enemies of Ahl al-Bayt salam this question falls into two categories of people. The first category are those who ask this question who are not sure, as in the hidayah and this ilm and this knowledge and light of Al Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam has not yet come to them. So we don't blame those individuals who don't have this ma'rifah and this knowledge of the Imam. The second category <coughs> falls in the category of those people who are ignorant and hypocritical and purposely ask this question for istihza in the Imam ajrallahu ta'ala farajo sharif. These people know 120% that Ali is with the truth and the truth is with Ali and he is with the truth. These people know, but they purposely reject this because of what? Hate towards Ali ibn Abi Talib. So this second question here, the same question, two categories of people. Those who the information has not been received by them, who go to their mosques and hear from their scholars, who only talk about Abi Bakr and Umar and never mention the Ahlul Bayt. We don't blame these people. These people are Qablin al Hidayah. We blame those people who come and they insult the mother of Imam Mahdi, Ta'ala Fardu Sharif, who insult the Imam himself, saying, Your Imam is in a well and he's waiting for something. And you guys are there and go and worship him. These are the people we are talking to today. So, inshallah, the question we want to look at today. <coughs> is why has the Imam lived for so long? Now before I actually start answering this question, I want to narrate to you a nas from the kalam of Sayyid Muhammad Kazim al-Qazwini. Sayyid Muhammad Kazim al-Qazwini, Allah irhama, has a book called Al-Mahdi, Min al-Mahdi ila al-Dhuhur. Min al-Mahdi ila al-Dhuhur. In his introduction in this chapter, where he explains why has the Imam, or how has the Imam lived for this long, he says this, <coughs> he says, I firmly believe that the discussion and argument concerning the topic of the long life of Imam al-Mahdi, Ajrullah Ta'ala Faradu sharif is one that has no goal. He's going to explain why. He said, it is merely ignorance and hypocrisy since we do not find evidence of anyone discussing or, discussing or questioning the long life of the angels of Iblis alayhi al-la'an or al-Khudr alayhi salam He says, al-Khudr alayhi salam who drank from the fountain of youth and has been alive from the era of Musa ibn Imran alayhi salam 
until this day. Henceforth, it seems that the discussion and the arguments seem to be only projected towards Imam al-Mahdi ala Fardu sharif This is the words of Sayyid Kalam al-Qazwi in his book. Why is he saying this? He's saying these people come and they have this ridicule fact of saying, how come your Imam has lived for so long? The Imams, the, the Sayyid says, what's the point of these people discussing these issues? Do they ever go and question the ages of the Mala'ika? The Mala'ika are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have lived since the beginning of time. Iblis alayhi la'ana, nobody questions his existence to this day. And as well as it, Al-Khudr alayhi salam. Al-Khudr, there's no arguments. It's in the Quran, it's in the Sunnah of Ahl al-Bayt, the hadith of the Mukhalifin, of the Khassa, and of the Amma narrate to you the life of Al-Khudr alayhi salam. So Sayyid Kadhim al-Qazwini is saying these people, when discussing this matter with them, there is no hadaf to it. It's crystal clear. It's like somebody coming and saying, let's discuss the, the heat of, the, of hellfire. How hot is hellfire? Let's discuss the light of the sun. Let's discuss the, the, the stars and the moon. So you see, there is no hadaf to it, but why? But istihza in the imam and their anger towards Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So you guys have to bear with me today, so I have a cough, so please, inshallah, I will, I'll try not to go too fast, but I have a cough, so inshallah, I'll try to myself to, to do this good, inshallah. So <clears throat> here you have Sayyid Kadhim al-Qazwini talking about this issue. So the Sayyid has hit the nail on the head, as we like to say here. So now, just for argument's sake, since I mentioned al-Khudr alayhi salam, when I mention, I like to give an example as a source. So the source I'm going to provide today is from our books. So it says, مرويًا عن شيخ الصدوق في إكمال الدين وتمام النعمة عن الرضا عليه الصلاة والسلام قال إن الخضر عليه السلام شرب من ماء الحياة فهو حي لا يموت حتى ينفخ في الصور وإنه ليأتينا فيسلم علينا and the hadith continues. So he's saying that al khudr عليه السلام drank from the fountain of youth and he is alive and not dead and he will not be die until the horn of resurrection is blown and then Khudr alayhi salam is amongst us. The hadith actually is longer. It continues saying if anybody mentions the name of Al-Khudr, make sure you say Assalamu alaykum ya Khudr as he can hear us. So you see that this is one example and who was also in Ghayba. The Imam is not the only person in Ghayba. People must understand Ghayba. So now, we said that this, these individuals, it's all about hate. So the Sayyid in his book, he narrates an incident and you guys will find this very very funny. In this incident, he says, look at how these people are so angry towards anybody, not just the Shia, but they're also angry towards the Christians and the Jews saying, you know what, if a Kafir, a Christian and a Jew can't do this scientific research type thing, he's a Kafir. In this example here, the Sayyid says, on the day, if you guys have done in, uh, your, your uh, homework in class, in science class, they talked about the man landing on the moon, Neil Armstrong and the Apollo landing on the moon. The Sayyid himself quotes this incident. He said, at that time, this incident happened around the whole world, the East and the West. Every single person on their TV sets are waiting for the first images from outer space, from the moon to the TV sets. Everybody's talking about this. A man, he says to Sayyid himself, a man comes to me. What does he tell him? He says, I am amazed at you. He's talking to the Sayyid. I am amazed at you that you actually believe what has happened here. How is it possible that the Christians, the disbelievers, the kuffar, have landed on the face of the moon? There you see, people are laughing. So this person comes to the Sayyid, he's like, how can you believe this, this lie, this big lie made up by these people, that a Christian landed on the moon and not a Muslim landed on the moon? This was back then, how long ago was that? 50, 40 years ago, I'm not sure of the actual date. The Sayyid responded to him, what did he say? So just because they do not believe in Islam, that prevents them from landing on the moon? It's like them saying for today, I bet you these Wahhabiyya, oh, it's impossible this person created this car, he's not a Muslim. You see where this logic is coming from? Alaykum as rahmatullah. You see where this logic is coming from? Just like today, in Iraq right now, they're killing Shia, it's a Shia genocide in Iraq, in Pakistan, Afghanistan. These people are doing shirk. 
These people have graves, they're doing shirk, they're worshipping their imams. And they're saying, you know what, we have to rid the world of Shia. Now in Iraq this is happening, in Pakistan it's happening, same thing. What is their ideology? This is shirk. They don't know what shirk is. They don't know that there is levels of shirk. They just go on what they see from the zahir and don't even ask the question, what's going on here? And here they are right now massacring every single person in their way. But alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, the maraja have spoken. Sayyid Ali Sistani, Allah yahfadha, has spoken. He said, take arms and defend the holy shrines and defend the people. And Sayyid Sistani, people right now, I saw on, on uh, CNN and CTV and the tweets online. These people in the West, they're misunderstanding the Sayyid statement. What are they saying? They're saying the Sayyid is calling for a sectarian civil war. The Sayyid never used the word Shia in his words. He used all Iraqi citizens, defend your country. Did the Sayyid say, do you Shia go defend? No, he said all Iraqi citizens, you go up right now and you defend your country. And I see online, ma'ala asaf, look, this ayatollah here from Najaf is calling sectarian war. We're defending our country because the ISIS, these Dajjalin, these, these terrorists, they're killing anybody in their way. Their hadaf is nobody, a Christian. I have a friend here in Ottawa. <coughs> he is an Assyrian. So he's, a, he's, a, he's not Muslim. He's just a Christian. Has, I'm not sure what his belief is, but he's not Muslim. He was telling me that he was trying to call his parents in Baghdad. And he has trouble calling them there. And that they're going through anybody really. It's, not, it's nothing about you, Ray. It's anything, anything in their way. It's like Torah annihilation. They want to destroy everybody, they want to get rid of the whole thing and then state Iraq as their Islamic state. Ma'al Asaf. Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa Ajjah wa Rajah wa Ala Adam. So now let us look at the examples of the long life in the Holy Quran. And I want the youth to listen because you'll get asked these questions. Maybe not right now. When you get to university, inshallah, you get to college, inshallah, when somebody comes to you, how is it your imam is living for such a long time? Ask them, these answer these questions from the Holy Quran. Tonight, I will give you two or one example from the Holy Quran, <coughs> from the short time that we have. Muhammad <coughs> Muhammad. The first example is Nabi Allah Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Nabi Allah Nuh is the perfect example for Imam Mahdi ajrullah ta'ala faraj's long life. And by the way, Nabi Allah Nuh, his age is also narrated in the books, in the Bible. In the King James Version of the Bible, chapter of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 28 and 29, what does it say? It says, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years. And all the days of Noah were 950 years until he died. This is from the Bible. King James chapter 9, Genesis 28 and 29. Now the Quran, the verse that I read in the beginning. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? He says that I have indeed sent Noah forth to his people and he dwelt among them a thousand years minus 50 the floods overwhelmed him, and from there, they were still lost in evil doing. Now here, <coughs> the uneducated person will come and say, but your imam has been living for 1400 years, how is this an example for the age of this long life? Again, it's tihza, and there's no education and there's no knowledge. See, alaykum as rahmatullah. <coughs> in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا so the time of the Risal of Nabi Allah Nuh alayhi salam till the time of the flood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he lived for 950 years. What does that mean? So if you want to quantify this into equation, what do we say? 950 is the known factor. 950 plus an X plus a Y. Why is X and Y there? I know you guys probably hate math, but here comes some simple arithmetic. 950 plus X plus Y. What is X? X in this case is the time that Nabi Allah Nuh alayhi salam, alayhi salam was, uh, was before his risale. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa laqad arsalna. 
the day he was sent as a messenger to preach to his nation. We don't know that number yet, but of course this number will be shown to us in the Hadith of Ahlul Bayt. And then the why. Now you ask me, what's the why? The Quran talks until the flood. So after the flood, what happened? Did he live after the flood? That's also a variable we have to look at. So that's when we open the Nur of Ahlul Bayt and we find the answer. <coughs> so we find in a hadith also in the Raid in Kamal al Din by Shaykh al Saduq with a Sahih Sanat. What does it say? It says, Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So we look at this hadith here by Shaykh al Saduq in his Ikmal al Din. It says, on the authority of Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq alayhi salam he said Nuh alayhi salam <coughs> has lived or lived for 2,500 years this is the most closest number then Imam alayhi salam starts breaking this age into the specific categories he says of those years 850 years was before the Ba'tha before his Risale so now we have what? 850 plus then the Imam Ali what does he say? He says the other 950 years, Noah spent with his nation, preaching them, bringing them towards the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So count 850 plus 950. Now what is the next? It says that Nuh alayhi salam spent 200 years constructing his ark. That's 200. So 850 plus 950 plus 200. And then after he had descended from his ark, and after the flood had calmed down and all the water had calmed down, Nuh alayhi salam lived for another 500 years building cities and residing in them with his sons. And the hadith continues explaining the interaction with Nuh alayhi salam and Malik al Mut. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So you see here, Nuh alayhi salam has lived for 2,500 years. And the Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam has just went and he explained those years in detail. So now, I want to tell you guys, why did I choose Nabi Allah Nuh alayhi salam as an example? Salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So why did I choose Nabi Allah Nuh alayhi salam as an example for Imam al-Mahdi ajr ta'ala faraj's long life? There's a hadith found narrated in as well Ikmal al-Din with Imam al-Na'ma on Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam. Imam Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam, what does he say? He said, وَقَدْ رُوِيَ عَنِ الْإِمَامِ زَيْنَ الْعَابِدِينَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فِي الْقَائِمِ Imam Fil Qa'im Sunnatun min Nuh wa hiya tool al Umr. So Imam Sajjad alayhi salam here is saying in the life of Imam al Mahdi Ajra Ta'ala Farj al Sharif is a sunnah, a tradition. And this is his long life. That's why I chose Imam al Mahdi's example with Nuh specifically, because that's how Imam Sajjad alayhi salam explained it in his hadith. How much time? Have Okay. So, one more example, insha'Allah, about the qadr of Allah, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. We have in Surah Al Safat, verses number 142 to 144, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of Nabi Allah Yunus alayhi salam. He says that the whale took Yunus alayhi salam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? He said, and he. And had he not been of those who exalt Allah, Yusabbah Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? He would have remained inside its belly until the day of resurrection. Now you guys are probably talking about why is this example here necessary concerning long life. I want to talk about the qadr, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qadr ala kulli shayin qadir. I don't understand why when somebody comes and questions Imam al-Mahdi's life, he's questioning the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you that if Nabi Allah Yunus alayhi salam did not, say, did not stay in that belly 
exalting Allah, tasbih of Allah, he would have remained in the belly until the day of resurrection. And the tafasir tell us from both, they say that he was alive in there, means he would have been alive, but ghayib, under the eyes of everybody until the day of resurrection. Without water, without food, this is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So now we have seen two examples. And inshallah, when you guys are asked these questions by anybody, answer with the Quran. And then as well, the hadith are so much. The hadith are very clear about the ghaybah of the Imam. And the hadith are very clear about who the Imam is. And some of them specifically say, Min wildi Fatima. Open the books. Alhamdulillah, the books of the Mukhalifin, you can find them online translated. You open Muslim Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and there's a chapter specifically for Imam al Mahdi. In that chapter, all of them say, Min wildi Fatima, or the 12th Imam is our Qa'im, and all that kind of stuff you find in the books. It's all about doing some research. Alhamdulillah, everything is there. So now that we have explained and answered this question, I would like to move on for a dua for the, our, our, our brothers and sisters in Iraq. But by the way, I mentioned Iraq, but please don't forget Pakistan. Three, days, three or four years ago, there was also a missile launched in one of the airports in Pakistan as well. Everywhere there's bloodshed, but right now everybody's focused on Iraq. Alhamdulillah, like I said, Sayyid Ali, Allah Yahfadha, spoke, Sayyid Mudarrasi in Karbala spoke, Sayyid Sadiq said, defend the shrines of Ahlul Bayt, Alhamdulillah, shukr. They have spoken. Now it's up to us, because here we are, we are here in the Gharba. What is our job in the Gharba? I'll take another 5-10 minutes of your time, I promise, inshaAllah, and I will leave. What is our job here in the Gharba? People can ask, oh, I want to go fight. But you have a job here in the Gharba, what do you have here? You have the power of social networking. You have the power of Facebook and Twitter. It has good and it has bad. What is the good about this? Last couple of days, there has been a hashtag going on online because pray for Iraq. Everybody writes what's going on in Iraq and they keep on saying pray for Iraq and hashtagging it. How do hashtag works? For people who don't know and are not really good with computers or have used technology, hashtagging is the hashtag, the number sign when you hashtag something and then you put it in the search field in Google or somewhere else, this hashtag, the algorithms in Google or in Facebook or in Twitter, remember this algorithm and then it searches everything under that hashtag. So right now if you go online and you write pray for Iraq, hashtag pray for Iraq, you'll see all kinds of information concerning people that have been tweeting or Facebooking or news about Iraq. So your job here and the youth as well Take some time, find information on the news, spread this awareness. Um, awareness is very important. The revolutions in Masr and Algeria all happened over one Facebook event. So now your job right now, our job right now, me and all of us included, is to spread this awareness. We, tell, we have to tell the West about what's happening in Iraq. My supervisor a couple days ago in work, he told me I was, I was at home and I read the news and I remembered you right away. See, this awareness is coming. It's like all I did, I accidentally came upon a Facebook share and then I saw Iraq and I remembered you right away. This is the kind of stuff we want. We want to send awareness to the people. I've actually seen people do something very nice and tricky. What do they do? They hashtag the World Cup 2014, then they hashtag pray for Iraq. Since every single person, millions and millions of people are watching the World Cup, maybe out of those millions and millions of people, one person sees pray for Iraq. Alhamdulillah, the message has been received at least one person. So now we want a dua and I want everybody to get up and read dua al-faraj with me with a sincere, sincere heart, please. Rahamallah man dhakara qa'im min ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu farajahum wa na'ala hadha. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم جميعا اللهم كل صلواتك عليه وعلى 
في هذه الساعة وليا محافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين يا الله 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 الهي بحق محمد والي محمد يا حميد بحق محمد ويا فاطر بحق فاطمه ويا عالي بحق علي ويا محسن بحق الحسن ويا قديم الاحسان بحق الحسين يا الله بحق الأمة المعصومين وبحق مريض كربلاء زين العابدين وبحق مولود الإمام الحج عجر الله تعالى فرجه الشريف عافي وشافي جميع المرضى يا الله وانصر جميع المسلمين والمسلمات وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد